Mic check. Welcome, everybody, to Toonsday Night. I'm your host, MC Toon, where it's always Toonsday Night, but of course, today actually is Toonsday Night. And that means I've got a debate, and I'm debating today the flurfs on the Medicinal Mass Media Discord server. Now, this server is run by Demon Stride, who isn't, isn't a flurf, uh, but he's got a, he's got a, 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 a derp of flurfs there waiting uh, to, uh, to talk We'll see. We'll see which ones uh, which ones are interested in uh, in uh, engaging in the conversation. But uh, there there's the server. There a couple things quick first. Um, Flatzoid's YouTube channel was hacked. So um, I don't know if anybody know. I don't know how any process to help get that back. But um, hopefully he can get his uh, Discord server or not his his uh, YouTube channel back. Uh, I, I you know I'm. I disagree with him, but I don't want his channel hacked. So, um, a special hello to Axis and Axis's daughter, Penny. How you doing, Penny? Keep it real. Keep your dad. Keep your dad on his toes. Um, is Starlink visible? I haven't looked up if Starlink is visible for me tonight. So, all right. Well, the the Discord server, the link is in the description. Um, Demon Stride's YouTube channel is in the description. I have his live chat up. Uh, if uh, on my, I'm just watching it. If you want to pop in there, um, so you know, uh, Demon Stride is is has been has been um, helpful in in uh, setting this up. So thanks to him. So uh, do send him your appreciation, however you might. Uh, Dave Kircher has a a uh, super sticker that says. Uh, GLHF, I think it's supposed to be GLTF, kind of light of flurf, but thank you for that, <laughs> Dave. And Keith Cooney is a new member at Einstein, so thanks for that. Um, while I'm on the Discord server, I'll try to work in, if I can, I'll work in any, uh, any messages that you guys send, uh, but certainly afterwards I will, uh, read them out and interact with you i do have another live stream after this at 10 o'clock central time so just under two hours from now where myself and uh, Br uh bryant myers if you remember him he's he took a a, a little uh, break for a while he's back for just a short time and he's he's between things so he's got some time to spend and uh, we're going to talk about dearth and his lies specifically the lies that he was telling about the uh, the Moonlander, um, India's Moonlander, and you've probably seen a whole bunch of flat earthers making up lies. Uh, so be sure to check check that out. And then one final thing, I was talking with Bob the Science Guy. He's like, "Hey, we should set up a two v two. So myself and Bob the Science Guy are going to debate somebody, some two people. We don't know. Just getting that going. So anyway." I'm gonna jump into the Discord server and see what they've got. Let's see what they got going on. I'm in. Where is your content? I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Shh. MC Toon to the MMM. How are you doing, good sir? I am good. MMM is is uh, that's 3M. That's uh, headquartered mm -hmm. headquartered in Minnesota here. So there it we definitely go. Definitely is. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, MC, hold on, guys. MC Tune, I'm going to be your moderator tonight. Um, I will try to keep it fair. I will not be interrupting. Sink Cleanser has made it a point to tell you that the only person that can mute you, can mute him, is you. So, I guess if you feel the need that you need to mute him, well, I said you could. Oh, oh, super! Thanks for the permission, Sin Cleanser. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, the earth is a globe. It's been measured. Um, and, uh, that's, that's what we're here to discuss tonight. Whether, whether if, if you disagree with that, then, uh, then do you have measurements supporting your claim? So anything, 
anyone. Yeah. Well, there you go, people. Uh, well, hold on. There uh, you go. That was Sin quick. Cleansers tried to, <laughs> Sin Cleansers tried to respond to you. And oh, I think you could oh he's say personally. <laughs> all right. I'll unmute him on my. Yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to have you per, uh, muted just for me. So, All right. Sin Cleansers. That was, from, that was left over from last time, buddy. All right. What do you got? That's embarrassing. I don't know what happened. Yep. All right. What's up? Uh, no, I just wanted to ask you before we get into this. Do you want an immediate spanking or do you want to ease into it? Uh um, I'm not into that. I mean, maybe that's your thing. Uh, <laughs> you, there's and there's websites where you could probably find that kind of activity, and you could maybe go down. There's slow. there's bars downtown you might find. I don't know, uh, but that's on you, not me. So, okay. So, what in your understanding do you find confusing about the flat Earth reality? Uh, there's nothing confusing about it. The Earth it could not be flat because the sun sets. So. Well, do you want me to demonstrate why the, the what do you want? What you want me to explain it to you? I have no problem telling uh, you why. Yeah, I I'd flat. love I'd love the comedy for how how you think the sun could set on flat earth. The sun being some large distance above what you think is flat and is is has nothing between the observer and the sun yet gets obstructed by the flatness of of the thing that's not between the observer and the sun. Okay, I will admit before we get into this, I am at a disadvantage because there's a gentleman named Bacon who created a great triangle. Um, I don't think he's here right now, but uh, maybe I can try to describe it. I hope somebody who whoever was here earlier can know what I'm saying and maybe post that in the chat so me and MC Tune can have a reference. Maybe don't if, worry. if we. I'm yeah. Well, I, the thing is. It, if your audience is going to be able to understand these arguments, you have to visualize reality. And we can do that, but, you know. Right, this, um, this sounds like a whole lot of waffle. Do you have any evidence? Oh, no, just... no, no, no. I'm, I'm completely, oh, okay. so you I'm don't completely have any. prepared to educate you. No, I, I said, do you have evidence? And you said, no, 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 no. I agree. Well, Okay. Well, what I'm trying to describe to you is that we have a complete understanding, and maybe you are unaware of this, but we can walk you through step by step. Maybe you could explain the South to him. Well, no, okay. the, the topic, it, it, see, let, let me just make it clear here. I started with the sun could never set if the earth was flat, and so there's been a lot of waffle so far, and, and so I'm just, I'm just anxiously waiting for the science... Uh, you know, the empirically confirmed science between for how something that has nothing between the observer and the object can get obstructed bottom up every single day. Yeah, Sin, he asked you a direct question, so let's uh let's hear your answer to it. Okay. So let me just jump into this uh with two feet forward here. Uh, we, I just spent probably three or four hours explaining to a room full of Globers why their understanding is incomplete because they haven't recognized the wisdom of flat earth. And I can describe to this with models, geometry, everything you need to weaponize your understanding, uh, to connect it with reality. And there are a couple simple facts that you may or may not need to, thank you. Thank you, Seafoam. Here's how we can get into this. Now, do you in the chat, MC Tune, see what uh, C phone posted? You see that? Okay. Yes, I have it up on my screen there. Can you pull up the picture on the left? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Okay. Let's both together look at the same image so I can tell you why the Earth is flat. Okay. You seeing it? Uh, it's on my screen. Yep. Still is. You see? You see B on the right side. B. Yeah. Okay, uh, and you see the GP, I imagine, right, on the left? Yep. Okay, so this GP to the B, that link, uh, A, you see in the middle, that's a flat Earth. You understand? I, I understand that's your claim. Okay, so you see the, the top? We have to come up with a number. You want to call it C? Uh, the top? Sure, sure, that's a good... It's good. You see, whatever they haven't marketed this on the graph, but you see where yeah, it, it should, all converges at the top. See? They should have marketed it. They need more. They mar should have. They need they more. A, 
demarcation. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. These guys don't understand that. I, I'm trying it's, to really describe I mean, maybe, it. Maybe, maybe there was some marcation, and then they removed it. That would be demarcation. Um, You're being a conspiracy so, theorist. Yeah, Let's don't not do that. Don't don't be demarcating things that need to be marcated. Okay, so just for the sake of argument, can we talk? Can we say that that pinpoint at the very top of the screen is C? Yeah, we. I think we already agreed on that. So, yeah, okay, let's, let's stick with that. Okay, so as C, as C, we'll call that the sun. If if you want to imagine flat Earth, C is going to go to the left as time goes on. The sun is going to go away from the observer B. You see that? Okay. Um, can so I just? As a, can, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, is is the angle? At at B, there's an angle that sticks straight up. It looks like is that meant to look like it's straight up? Well, we can look directly at the sun. No, 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 no. If you look over on the right side of the diagram, we at, need a better graph. At, at letter, hold on a second. At letter B, at letter B, there's a line that points straight up, and a line that points diagonal, and a po line that points towards the GP. Right. There's so there's a the, lot of shit going yeah, on. Yeah. The line that points straight up is that meant to be vertical? From the GP up to C? No, from B, letter B, straight up. Is that is that meant to be straight up? Mm, it's at an angle. No, the one that the one that looks like it goes mostly straight up. From B to C, you would have an angle that's not ninety. It's not B to C. Okay, so B to C would not be a ninety. I'm not right? talking about B to C. I'm talking about B straight up. There's a line that's going straight up. It doesn't go very far, but it goes straight oh, up. Oh, you're talking about the purple line? Yeah, yeah, purple line. That would be plum. Is that okay? That is good. All right, good. Yeah. Thank you. What do you mean? Like, is that not plum? No, I was just. I, it was not marked or labeled. Well, that's what I'm saying. This graph is shit. Like, I'm. Oh, this yeah. is like. All right. but, I don't uh, know who made but this, let's, but I'm trying to work. Let's, with what we yeah, can. let's keep let's keep discussing it. So so what are you, what are you saying about this one here? Well, for Pete's sake, look, if we could get somebody to look, accurately describe Pete, this shit. Pete's not like, here. Listen, okay, Pete's hold on, MC. Here. Listen, listen, MC. I'm trying to, I want to be able to talk with you about this, uh -huh. but we're working with shitty material. Okay, well, let, let's go over this a little bit you know I mean? more. I think I think this is pretty good uh, that we can at least talk about it while somebody else maybe is fishing out a different diagram. Please, but I, I, see, I see, I see, I see 1,800 from the GP to A and another 1,800 from... From A to B, I take that gotcha. to be nautical miles. Is that nautical miles? Uh, let's, let's not jump the gun here. Oh, you don't want to? There's no gun jumping happening here. I let's just not. Let's not be ridiculous. Okay. Why? Why is that? Um, why is that ridiculous? Because there's no curvature. Um, you can. Well, yeah, that. it is. It is ridiculous that, that you'd say that that straight line is the Earth when there's no curve to it. Because in okay, reality, okay. there's curve, right? <laughs> From B to GP, there's no curve. You agree? Uh, on this diagram, yeah, that that's a on the diagram. Okay, it's so been what, drawn. I don't right know yet. what you're talking about. What what yeah. curve? Exactly, you're the one that complained that there wasn't any curve here. Just a well, second I was ago. To help you. There is no curve. I agree. There's 100% yeah. no right, you're, curveature. Yeah, your your po your poing is slipping a little, Sin Cleanser. You're gonna have to up your game. No, you, okay. You had a little Freudian but slip there. Let me start over. Let me start oh, over. This is on. an inadequate model. I All think right, we I'm, can both agree. Let, 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 me, let me crack a, a tab here. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Can we right have there. some better there material? Hmm. There you go. All right. Well, let's just do straight with well, the trigonometry. Let me, let me just uh, address this a, a little more oh, here. Yeah. I'm on it with the better picture. Thank you. Uh, so, go ahead, MC. So in reality, if you are 1,800 miles from the GP of, of, let's say, the sun, and let's say it's on the day of the equinox, so you're 1,800 miles north of the equator, and you're 1,800 miles north of the GP of the sun at local solar uh, noon or the, the, you know, the zenith for the sun. I like saying local solar noon better because zenith in this diagram is also straight up, so it's a little... Uh, we're, we're overloading we're yeah. overloading terms anyway so so that means that that um, on the earth when you're 60 degrees away from the the equator 
you are also 1800 nautical miles away from the equator and that letter a does properly show the angle to the sun that you would get at that moment the problem is though uh when you look at flat earth right and and your diagram there has uh doesn't quite have the right numbers on it as matches reality for where B is, because B I'm taking in this diagram to be 60 degrees north latitude or 60 degrees south latitude in our example. In reality, the the angular measurement would be 30, not 41. Okay, just as a point of moderation, uh, Seafoam, the thing you posted, MC10, please. Yeah, it uh, doesn't, for the sake it doesn't of... match actual observations. So, yeah, that's a, that's a no, bit no, 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 no. Check me out. Let, let's not jump into it too quickly. Uh, uh, Seafoam, your thing, if you could just label every point. All right. Now, somebody said access. somebody said that another one has been posted. So, oh, I just, I just, just want to work with some point of reference oh. because I have no problem describing. All right. Seafoam, Seafoam updated. I just. Yeah, I just yeah, but I want the, the angles color. A, B, C. I wanted everything lingo so we, we I can talk to you with this. It's yeah. like it's like color coded. So yeah, but there's there there. Hold on, Sam, Sam, Sam. Let Seafoam say what he's got to say, and then you can say what you got to say. Yeah, I just I just have it color coded. I don't want to make it like too cluttered, you know. Like okay, can you just angle. do me a favor and label every part of this triangle Th there's with a only, letter? There's really just one that's missing. That's at the top. That's we've already agreed is letter C. So we can we can do that. That, that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Are, are you not able to move forward until we got that on there? Oh, geez, that's too bad. Well, OK, well, what do you want to call the top one? C. The top one. We're going to okay, call C, it C. C's fine. C is fine. So you agree that C as C if we say C is the sun and the sun gets further away from B, which is the observer in perspective, as C goes further to the left, there's not even a, no, this is not even accurately described because the point of the GP to C is not even labeled. This is, this is not adequate. We need everything labeled. Well, we can't even talk what's, about it. What's not labeled? What, what extra thing did uh, you want labeled? G, GP to C. That we we could call that Y G P to C. What do you want? Oh, you want to label the line? Usually lines are not labeled. That you just use the two points. I want to be hyper specific. I don't want you to weasel yeah, your be, way out. Yeah, being of hyper specific would be the line G P to C. That that's how you're hyper specific. Look, if you don't want to be detailed, we don't have to be detailed. I just I just tell, told you how to be detailed. Well, I'm ask. I'm literally begging for them to try to give us something to work with here. I I think it's great. I can totally work with it. Okay, what would you call the ang What would you call the line from GP to C? I would call it Y. The line from GP to C. Okay. Well, can we say Y? Like like the letter Y, maybe. Sure. Why? Well, that's a great letter. Go ahead. Okay, so you would agree that as C goes to the left, Y will decrease because the sun apparently sinks towards the horizon. No, you no, the actual, um, unless you're claiming that the actual elevation of the sun changes, then then line Y would not change in length. It would remain the same size. According to perspective, if we are the observer B and we yeah, were looking well, over the this yeah. shit, none of this shit is labeled. This shit's all fuck like dude, this is the, the shittiest Boy, fucking you, you diagram are, you are, in the world. You are waffling pretty hard here. Can we so, just get an accurate people people are wondering people are wondering uh at at angle at point B there's an angle forty one and another angle that looks like forty five, but it's actually forty nine. This that, is that is nine is up. is a little is a little sloppy there. So can somebody post what Bacon posted early? Just please, oh for the sake of the conversation I mean, with me and we're, MC. We're, can we're you like guys scroll up and find it and post it so we're me and MC fifteen can talk minutes about into this geometry. and it's all waffle. No, oh my God. Yeah. Listen, I mean you could you could break out. Look, you could break M out your M crayons. MC, I'm not trying to argue with you about the. Uh, look, I, know, I just but, want something we can both work from. But yeah, or I could work from this. But let's you you could break out your crayons and make your own drawing. Okay, 
My God, you guys are gonna make me do this shit. This is shame on you guys. Yeah, Listen, shame on you, guys, you for not doing sin no, cleansers. We, we were form. talking about this for probably three, four hours. And and look, early. sin cleansers and dog. Now they just all of a sudden forget how to yeah, post. Sin shit. cleansers I, okay, dog got okay. hungry, ate all of his homework. Sin well, cleanser doesn't, doesn't have any right crayons there, anymore. The link, shame on you yeah. guys. If you click the link, you can see the image from Bacon. At least, no, we're gonna do it. I got it. This is. I got it. I got it. So he phone posted another one and he labeled the last. No, 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 yep. no, 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 no. Me and okay, me and Bacon. Every angle, he had the GP to the C. He yep, had we got that. Y, he had all this. Oh shit. yeah, we got uh, it. This he had new the one. GP to B label. This new one is we, amazing. We talked it's about got real all. geometry. It's got them all. It's got them all now. Yeah, this is not it though. Real it's geometry. Me. No, I've got the new one. Then. Okay. Come on. Well, let yeah, me clear C this up. Hold on. C right, You're okay. going to make me get into paint and fucking uh, draw it. Stan, on you. Stan, be quiet for a minute. Tune, what uh, what question was you trying to ask him about this? Uh, uh, so we well, can, I'm, yeah, just he's, to, you know, get it rolling. He's kind of he's kind of trying to run away from it. But what I'm saying is that uh, the GP and when when you are 1800 miles away from the GP of the sun uh, at local solar noon, if on the day of the equinox, then that angle, 60 degrees, is the angle that is measured in reality. However, in reality, when you okay. are 3,600 miles, uh, nautical miles, away from the equator, the actual measured angle is 30 degrees, not 41 degrees. Check this out, MC10. Nobody else interrupt. You see what I just posted? Oh, yeah. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this, because I'm going to reference this. If you want to understand Flat Earth, I will describe this. If you want to deal with this, we can talk about Certainly. That. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, can you see B? B, we will say, is the sun. Okay. So as, the, as B goes further to the left, that will increase the X distance length. Yes, X Agreed? will increase. Y will remain the same. And B will also go further to the left, and, right? And, and theta will decrease. Yeah. Okay, that being said, the flat Earth claim is as B goes further to the left and as X extends in its length, Y will decrease according y. to A, which is perspective. So Y is the linear height of the sun in this instance. So you're claiming that as the sun gets farther away, it actually gets closer to the ground. That's perspective. No, no, not per perspective. Is the angle theta? Theta is the angle is perspective. So you, There's but you much. have you have specifically claimed now that the actual height of the sun changes just because somebody's farther away from it. That's what you said. Yeah. Those, okay. Okay. Let me clarify it because I don't want to use straw man. I don't think you're wanting this straw man flat earth. But if you are the perspective of A, and we're looking through the understanding of perspective. And B being the sun, and it goes further away from you, it's going to go to the horizon, which will make Y shrink. No, Y will not shrink unless the sun actually gets lower in elevation. That's what would make it. Does the sun yeah. appear to go to the horizon? Yeah, the angle theta does, <laughs> does go to zero and negative values, in fact. Yeah. Welcome to Flat Earth. You just agreed Y decreases. No, I did not. I agreed that theta decreases and Y remains the same. As B goes to the left from the observer A, Y will decrease no, in accordance won't. to C over no. X. Yes. No, it won't. Why would Y That's C That's the equation. No, that won't actually change. You are you oh, that would only happen if the elevation of the sun actually decreases. So, in order for Do that you to not happen, agree the sun goes down. It does, yeah, but it does not. B goes to C. But you are claiming that for flat Earth, that the elevation of the sun varies based on the distance of the uh, to the observer. That that's a very strange claim yeah. because sin cleanser. There is there is somebody that is directly underneath the sun at that time. So sunset for the person that's at point A when the sun sets. Somebody at point C can look straight up and see the sun. But you have claimed that Y decreases to zero. How could that yes. be? How could the linear elevation of the sun actually change? Okay. I have to make a point, MC10. I want you to please understand it. What I'm saying is that every flat earther will tell you 
that if you are in the perspective of A, the observer, as B, the sun, moves further away from you, it will shrink its Y. No. The Y will shrink. Theta. Be, hold on. No, theta no, 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 no. shrinks. If you don't understand it, you're not going to, you're going to miss no. it. No. Theta B shrinks. It will shrink to C. Oh my C, gosh. Are you mocking flat this earthers? This is perspective. Are you actually mocking flat earthers, Sinclenser? This is, this is. This complete mockery of flat earthers Find and flat, me earthers, flat earther that did flat, flat yeah, earthers hey, Tony, I, hold on guys Tony, I, 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 at first i was wondering if he was authentic too but i have talked to him pretty extensively over the last couple of months and he really believes what he's telling so he you really believes with the argument well, hold on. I, let me let me talk. All right. So you really believe that the sun actually gets closer to the flat earth and then touches the ground and then goes into the ground so that the per person at point A can observe it going into the ground. I believe that B gets farther from A and it decreases Y. So, yeah. So the sun gets closer to the ground. Why is the yeah, elevation that's, that's of the horizon? No. Why is the linear elevation of the sun over your flat earth? And so you are claiming that the elevation of the sun decreases. Every flat earther will say, as the sun gets further away from you, it will decrease between B and C. But, and so every flat earther, so, so let me, let me make sure I understand your claim. You're yeah. claiming that every flat earther will claim that the sun reduces in linear elevation as, as it gets farther away from a, an observer. That's what you're saying? Every flat, every flat earther, every flat earther will admit and confess that y decreases over the distance from b from a but, yes so, so the sun actually then touches the ground and goes into the dirt no the farther b is from a y will decrease yeah why to is c, the to c to c why, into the vanishing yeah point. why why you're is you're confusing the angle with the distance He's you want to say flat earthers don't believe that find me a flat earther that doesn't Sick believe that. you're talking about an angle you're not talking about a actual we're talking about distance. perspective yeah no, that's you're perspective is angles it specifically talks about an axis oh, hold on hold on let's keep it on let's keep it on mc tune and uh because we we always manage to Everybody start falling apart here, and I'm trying to keep it tuned show tonight. Well, uh, oh, let me say this. Let me say this, Cole. Every flat earther is required to believe what I'm saying. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why he is a po. He is intentionally making them look bad. No. What flat, okay, name me a flat earther that says as B goes to the left and X increases its length from it, A. It's, it's, you, to dude, C, it's your claim. Y will decrease. It's Every your flat claim. earther will say yes. It's your claim, not mine. Every flat every, earther will yeah, agree. Yeah, Find me a flat everyone. earther that doesn't agree. It's your, your claim. So I just have to say something because it's not that like you're talking past each other. Are you talking angle? Y being an angle or a distance? Because I think F FTFE is talking about. A distance. FTFE is, that, is not in the room with you right now. I know, but you, you're you saying this. So <laughs> I don't know if you know that, actually. You can call me MC Toon. <laughs> oh, actually, sorry. Oh, can I sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, He's I a clover, by the way. I didn't, I didn't recognize. But I think it might help if you explain to him what you're saying. because Zanuck, Zanuck, I have no problem explaining it. Zanuck, our accents are so it, different. We're here for me. Just, just, Zanuck. I don't want to join in. I just wanted that you make, you make sure you clarify with MC Toon that you're talking about He's talking about a distance above the ground. You're talking about an angle. Are you not? Oh, no. He's talking about distance. Angle. I keep asking him. I'm this talking about angles. You're very right. angles. It's very explicitly and, and labeled. No, I am talking about angles. You're right. Oh, so, okay. it's, so you're yeah. not so, talking about why? You're talking about you theta. You debunk reality? What are you going to do? All right. Let, let, let me see. Let me. You said you're talking about angles. So why is a line? It's a distance. It's not an angle. Theta in your diagram is an angle so you say that theta decreases as b gets farther away i agree so does, yeah i agree yeah. but why does not why is the linear height of the sun above <laughs> above your flat earth how does theta decrease and why doesn't that <laughs> dude oh come, my gosh come on that's ridiculous all right that here well, i'll go theta back is gonna decrease and oh so look at this all right i'll go back to seafoam's seafoam's thing here so pull up a, he's got a new one there it's even labeled c he, he labeled everything for you so nah, so I'm observer with what I got observer at point a has has a, a, an angle to to C I posted it again I'm talking about the one that seafoam gave so that we can see two different why can't we talk about the same image yeah go ahead pull up the one that seafoam gave 
so that we can look at it because okay, it has two I, I different got everything distances. Labeled. A, theta, X, C, yeah, but, y, but you B. don't Come have on. you don't have two locations. You only have one we location. Have the observer A, we have the sun B, and we have the horizon X. We have mm. everything here. What do you mean? You only have no, one. Okay, somebody there. deleted it. That's not okay. fair. Come on, guys. Right. Don't delete my shit. Let's get the one Listen, from Sin. Sin. Take. Let's take this serious. Tune is asking. It's not fair you that you guys care. delete my shit like that. I don't care. Listen, if you're gonna be on here, let's take it serious. Let's have a serious I'm actually giving a, a fuck debate. about this. Okay. Well, then, if you, there's a apparently a good diagram you guys can talk about, so talk about the diagram. That uh, we're dealing that, with that, my that diagram. If you don't want to deal with my diagram, you're a coward. Now, MC Tune, address <laughs> my diagram, or you will be forever known as a coward. No, I already yeah, did. I, this I, this I already is did. basic understanding of geometry. I, I already did. I already did. What do you have a problem with? The problem I, okay, is uh, the problem. If you're gonna debunk it, what do you have a problem with? Hey, when you ask me a question, it's time for you to shut your face hole. Got it? When I when you ask I a question, you hear you when you that. ask a question and then and then I start talking, your face hole has to remain shut while I'm talking. See tune, you're buying time. All right, I'll look. Dan, you. you remember the rule that you that, that I I'm told being Tune. polite. Come on. Address Go ahead. this, Go ahead. MC. Go ahead, right MC. Now. Scene cleanser, please have some respect. You asked him a question. Let him answer your question. All right. In this, ahead, di in this diagram, as X increases, line Y will remain the same, and theta will decrease. That's basic triangles. It's, it's covered in, in elementary school, literally. Y does not change just because B moves farther away. Can I ask you? Or maybe you want to keep going. How does theta decrease without y also decreasing? I can show you if we move to C foam's diagram. No, no, that's okay. ridiculous. Then because I'm done. You know as well as then I I'm do, done. theta then I'm done. decreases. Then we're done. Y also does. Then we're done. Geometry. You ask me a question. I'm prepared to give you the answer. You refuse to look at the answer. Then no, we're no, done. No, 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 no. no. I want to see it. No, 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 no. We're it. done. You pull up. You are you ready to pull up C foam's? I want to see it. Are you pulling up Seafoam so that we can talk about it? It's not my claim. All right. Good to talk to you. <laughs> if you got it, I'll see it. Great to talk to you, Sin Cleanser. You have mocked Flat Earthers again, and I love it. But I think that we should give a chance for real Flat Earthers to participate. So, uh, so you know, I have muted him for me since he has wasted everybody's time. I mean, he hasn't wasted everybody's time. He has mocked Flat Earthers and made them look stupid. So I do appreciate that, Sin Cleanser. Mm -hmm. So anyway, do are there any real Flat Earthers here? There um, there might not be, uh, MC. I'm sorry, but it looks like uh, Flat Earth might actually be dead. Um, there's be. no one to actually give evidence or measurements of flat or no curve. It's honestly quite a sad um, state of of this whole movement. I thought it was growing, but in the last couple of weeks, it seems to have really, like, um, completely fizzled. Like, there's just nothing, it appears. Yeah. Well, let me, let me work. just, just a second, you know, Lael, you're not. Don't, don't, don't pull it up either. Um, all right. Let me just talk to the diagram that Seafoam brought up and compare it to, to a Sin Cleanser's uh, one. So we do have two examples here two angles two observer positions that are farther away so if you look at look at just the left triangle here a g p c that triangle that's like sin cleanser's triangle that he brought up and then and then he talked about well as as c moves farther away from the observer or in this case as the observer is farther away from c that's that's point b so we have the triangle C, G, P, B. Now, the observer has doubled their distance, and the angle has reduced, even though the elevation did not change. So at point A, we have 60 degrees. That's theta. And at B, we have 41 degrees. That's theta. It's farther away. That's how it can happen. This is literally 
just basic triangles that are covered in elementary school. Um, and so pretending, that's what you have to be doing, uh, pretending to not get that does make flat earthers look bad. Um, but anyway, there you go. I spoke to that. I debunked it. Uh, he doesn't have any measurements of flatness. Thank you for that. So, I see hammers here. Hammer, you got any questions for MC Tune? We'd like to hear him. Yeah, how come you have to mute Sin Cleanser to win? Sin Cleanser's a Poe. He's, He's making you look bad. I don't know why you, you would back that. Well, now, Hammer, and, and uh, just to clear it up, Sin Cleanser gives specific rights to me to tell MC Tune that MC Tune could mute him and only MC Tune could mute him and MC Tune muted him. So that's just how it turned out. Yeah. I mean, if he wanted to have a, a conversation in, in it know, seems like you got an actual, personally. if he actually wanted to have a conversation about stuff, then I'd be happy to do that. But he never does. He was so. talking to you about perspective, wasn't he? You guys no. got to the, the no. angular height. No, he was literally claiming that the sun, the sun's elevation changes. Did you not? Did you not catch that? And he actually declared that all flat earthers must believe that the that the sun's elevation must decrease. Well, why don't you let him speak for himself? Let's let's let him clarify that. Did he indeed say that? Let's he did see. several yes, times. He did indeed say that the entire channel that was already here before you got doesn't here sound, heard him say it. Doesn't sound like something. I was like, I was hoping you'd get to the as a muddle grid of vision as a part of perspective. It it is recorded. You can go back. Um, can we, we haven't right. been going for that long. Okay. Let's see, recorded 44 minutes, so it's probably right. 22 yeah, minutes in. He he says that. Yeah. Every okay. flat earther must think that, that the line from the GP to the sun shrinks as the observer gets farther away. It was it was quite quite something. So what about okay. what were you talking okay. about? Trouble of uh, the azimuthal grid of vision fantasy? Uh, real quick yeah. before you guys start That's on that, right. hold on, trouble. Wait, well, just a minute, trouble. Uh, MC Toon, I yeah. apologize. I have to step away as moderator. Um, someone else is going to have to take over Ooh. for now. But oh, um, I do appreciate you being here tonight, and I will be listening. All right, thanks, Cole. Hey, hey, um, MC Toon. I think I understand what Sim Cleanser is actually saying, but he needs to verbalize it. Um, I think what he's saying is if there's an observer staying at the GP and he moves back, that line will decrease. But that is the angle of 60 degrees. Yeah, the angle will decrease. Yeah, moves, angle. Yeah. It, it, creates, it ends up creating uh, two lines instead of one line. If you're staying right under the sun and it's 90 degrees above you, that's one line. But as you move back, you create a second line, which is the actual angle. But as you move back, you create a second line. Okay. I think that's what he's trying to verbalize. And as you move back further and further, that line does shrink. What, what or, line? Or it what, gets closer what, to the ground. No, wait. What line shrinks? I, I should say the line, as you move further and further back away from the GP, the, the top of the line that goes from... C to A, or whatever you want to label it, or B to A, shrinks as you get further away. No, no, no line shrinks. You mean the angle shrinks? Yeah. Okay. That I should rephrase that. The line appears to shrink. Oh or, yeah. Or get closer oh, to the yeah. ground. Yeah, yeah because get it, closer it's, to the horizon. Its angular size shrinks. Right. Right. I yeah. agree. I agree yeah. with you. That's but I the think angle. That's, that's the angle. Yeah, but he kept saying that the actual line Y will reduce he, he i understand he that, but dug I his he, he dug his heels in he, actually he totally dug his heels in on that but i have no, i no, have no. yeah yeah, I, I yeah it's definitely out. they're definitely saying that the elevation of the object shrinks and that's why it goes into the ground that's why the sun sets because its elevation shrinks as it moves away from you. That's definitely what he's saying. Well, in, in, in his defense, the last thing he said when I called him on it, he then changed his tune, which was the prior tune of the distance, to, okay, he goes, then let's talk about angle then. 
And he did. He, and then he couldn't respond to the he, questions at MC2. Well, yeah, he did. He, and he knew that if we were to look at Seafoam's picture, that his point would be gone. That's why he didn't. Right. Work. He refused exactly. to. Right. He asked me a question. He said, will you address it? I said, yes, I would like to address it. Look at Seafoam's picture. And he refused to look at Seafoam's picture. He's not debating in good faith. Right. So if, if he is willing to look at Seafoam's picture and have a conversation about Seafoam's picture and debate in good faith, then maybe he could come back on. But he's being a, a yeah, petulant he, child, so no. Yeah, he was happily uh, muted because that was a clear no. shot across the bow. I don't want to argue. Oh, yeah. I just want to be a po and it's just divert to my... To, oh, here he is. He wants to talk now. Oh, well, I'll, I'll let him... I'll, I'll give him one more chance. Go ahead, Sid. Okay, MC MC Tune, you know I'm Six not being ridiculous. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. You have one chance. Okay, okay. I won't I'll try it. I'll hold my breath. I won't choke on this one. Let, let me just let me just try to describe to you the reality of what I think is happening here is that if you're looking at something, every flat earther will say, Where does the sun go? Where does the sun go? it goes away? So you're gonna have an increased distance away from the observer. You know, that's just part of the geometry of flat earth. Like, why don't you guys want to accept that? I can't make you accept that, but you have to deal with what the right, flat right. earth is. You, you didn't, you haven't addressed it though. You haven't addressed the specific topic. I pull, just posted the up. image again. No, we're going to talk about Seafoam's image. You ready for that? Look, okay. Are, okay. Yes, you yes or no. I'm, this is your I'm, one chance. Do you this is your one chance. Are you going to look at Seafoam's image? MC Tune, do you think I'm hiding? Do you think I'm running away from any sort of flat earth anything? Yes. Sir. Are you going to look at? Are you going to look at geometrically? All right. Fin, you Fin's had Fin's you had your one shot. Just the image. We no, were no. looking at it. Here's the reason he doesn't want to is because he was spanked on it hard today. Well, yeah. I'll, uh <laughs> So I, be, I I know why you want to run, Sin. It's okay. Um, yeah, he's done. He's done. I gave him one more shot. He refused to look at to do it. Yeah, he's not debating in good faith. No, look good. Right. Yeah. So, so if he's you done. don't want to look at. You're going on back on. You got you got three seconds to to address it. You're looking at Seafoam's picture. That's no, no. That's what people say to cope. If you've gotten muted, it's because you were being disrespectful. Yeah. Last chance. Oh, I can't hear they, him. They win, I guess. <laughs> His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. It's his mom's spaghetti. Damn. I see what you did there. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, he had one shot, and he let it slip. How does the sun? How does the sun move away from you and not get smaller? It's a, like... a great question. <clears throat> Uh, you know, perspective that, you know, you hear flat earthers talk all the time about perspective. Well, perspective is simple. It's things appear smaller when they're farther away. That's it. When they're close, they're big. When they're farther, they appear small. And and so if the sun is small and local, then its angular size must shrink dramatically throughout the day. Same for the moon. The moon's easier to see because we don't get we don't get a whole bunch of glare on, on uh, when you try to take video or pictures of it. Yeah, and then when you ask them why that doesn't happen, they'll go perspective. And it's yeah. like, but perspective ex explains why it should happen, not why it should. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, MC Tune, I actually did an experiment where I used my telescope to measure the angle to the sun. Yeah. And I used its GP to, like, pretend I was measuring on a flat Earth. And if you look, what I found is for the sun to set on a flat Earth, it literally needs to drop like a thousand miles and more just for sunset to happen. Um, well, it, in order for the sun to actually set, theta in our, in our, our diagrams has to go negative. Exactly. And, 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 and that's and, impossible. And never in this triangle, I'm, I have Sinclair's triangle up right now, never, no matter how long X is in this diagram, theta is never zero. It's always positive. And it's certainly neg never negative. Yeah, I, I posted, I think, under it, the graph of the arc tangent of n over x, which is asymptotic. Yep. 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's this one here. Yeah, it is an it's an arc tangent relationship for theta, and it never gets to zero. It approaches zero. Um, and so for people who who asymptotic means it comes to an asymptote. It means it it approaches the line. So that's what this line is there that, that's going to, top on the top left and curving down towards the bottom right. It never gets to the bottom. It just gets closer and closer. But it's not a linear relationship either, which would have to it would have to be um but it, sorry, it is linear. As you as you double your distance, uh for if you know if you're at eighteen hundred nautical miles from the equator and in reality you double your distance you half the angle so anyway yep thanks for that how, how long have you been uh poking at the the, the flatties here um uh, not not for too long i've only been in this server since what june okay yeah but like i I've owned my telescope for about a year now. And, you know, with those observations and stuff like that, it's obvious that Earth is a globe. Yeah, we get some pretty cool streams with seafoam in here and some pretty awesome oh. nuts from the flat earthers here. Uh, yeah. Claiming that the, ah. it's CGI that's being live streamed in and yeah, he gets the brunt of it. I see, uh, let's see, did Hammer... Hammer said, "Globers deny angular size change of sun and moon." No, no, Hammer, we don't. We we don't actually do that. Let me, you know, you know how I can show you. Um, the angular size of the sun and moon are very consistent. They they vary slightly, and uh, primarily the height of the sun gets a little compressed near the horizon, as predicted by the the. Uh, index of refraction gradient that is in the air uh but let me let's see i have a video i'll i'll grab for everybody you can all watch it uh i'll post it there for you there you go so that's that's the angular size of the sun through a solar filter um and uh you can see as it's as it's coming up, as it's at midday, as it's at the sunset, it's it's not changed dramatically. So I don't know what you're talking about, Hammer. I I do agree that there is some nominal change of in the size of the sun, but for flat Earth, it must vary dramatically, and it must be different angular size throughout the day and based on your location. So yeah, so hammer hammer posts it. Yes, thank you for that hammer. You have shown that near the horizon, the sun or the moon, the moon did not uh, shrink to a point. There you go. Again, he posts another another photo of the moon not shrunk to a point near the horizon. Thank you. You have once again shown that uh, it doesn't work with flat Earth, right? Yeah, like how can you claim that things shrink as they get further away from you, and then show you a full size mo moon on the horizon? And go, yeah, that's flat. Are, are yeah. you? <laughs> I got lost. It's the first law of flurf, right? The first law of flurf is all flurf citations contra contradict the flurf claim, and that's what you've done, Hammer. Also, just a random question: Doesn't the moon get larger when it gets closer to the horizon? It does not. Not smaller. It does not. No. It it looks like it because of because it's it's proximate to things, but if you actually measure it, it's not. So you can measure it by holding up your pinky at arm's length. Your pinky at arm's length is about one degree wide, and the moon is about one half of a degree wide. So when when you're looking at the moon and it's right next to the horizon, you're like, oh wow, it looks big. Hold up your arm, stick that pinky out like you're drinking a foofy drink, and 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 see if it's about half the size of your pinky. And then, you know, middle of the night or whatever, the, the moon is right up high in the sky. Do the same thing, and you'll find that it did not change. That's a ball That's a ball of claim. There's no evidence based on that. That's not even it, scientific. It's actually unscientific. 
How's so, it Blah up? Tech, do you believe that the, the, the moon gets bigger on the horizon of a flat Earth as it's moving it's away from you? It's a gas-filled balloon. It's a gas-filled giant. That's what the moon is. <laughs> you people are clueless. Okay, That's guys, what listen. expands and contracts. Hold on, Blah Tech. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not let this devolve into uh, everybody dog. McToon's a deep state stooge. He's, McToon's a fraud. He works for the government. Stop <laughs> supporting no, him. I, I would like to hear the <laughs> evidence of the moon. Yeah, of the, the moon having moon, helium yeah, in it. Yeah, let's let's hear well, it. Now. Wait, Blotek, F- please. I'm I'm trying to set it up, Blotek, to where you can have a decent back and forth with MC Toon. I, I'm trying to keep everybody from jumping in and dog pulling on you. If you'll stay calm, this is your chance. I'm not talking to a fraud. He's an Illuminati clone. Hey, McToon, who are you related to? Tell me who you're related to on YouTube. No, I'm mute. Thank you. I'm just going to mute him. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're not just going to yell into the stream. (laughs) We're going to show right now. What What a douchebag. What a complete douchebag. Thank you. Thank you once again, Flat Earther Blatek, for making Flat Earthers look horrible. You did a good job. What an idiot. <laughs> He's not a flat earther. No, nope, uh, please stop the personal insults. We attack the argument, not the uh, person here. Uh, but yeah, no, he doesn't have any um, arguments. So I was hoping to hear about about the helium filled balloon. That was a new one because I've heard I've heard that the this, the moon is a dog toy. Uh, I've heard that the moon was blown up. Um, that was uh, melted out of the Grand Canyon, uh, scooped out of the Grand Canyon, melted by giants and then filled with helium and put up in the sky to mock us that was flatter thawsy jesus who sounds like he might be from the same area as blatek but uh wow <laughs> all right well <clears throat> so yeah in- an interesting thing here um the hammer says no fe claims shrinking it, no flat earthers claim that that the size that the s- size of the moon shrinks, well, that's a problem well, for you though, know, because 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 yeah, perspective demands that it will if it's small and local, as as is the common claim. Yeah, so I don't know how they understand themselves. This <laughs> yeah. Oh, do they just redefine? Are they trying to redefine the definition of perspective? Well, yes. That things they... don't get smaller as they go distant. They just go below the horizon when they get further away from you. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's just the hand wave. They just say perspective without really knowing what it means. But, but you, can, you can calculate it, right? You, perspective is an application of the triangle that, that uh, Sin Cleanser already posted. I'll pull it up here for everybody following along um right there that's a right triangle but uh you can do pers- perspective with uh any any size triangle it's not necessarily going to be a right triangle but um but yeah as as uh b as the object bc whatever object bc is moves farther away theta angle theta will shrink and when bc gets closer angle theta will grow that's what happens. That's that's perspective. Right there, that's perspective. All you need to do is solve that triangle and and you can you can then know all of the things about it. If you know how far away it is and the angle, um, and you need one more and, and if it's a right triangle, right? So you need three pieces of information to solve a triangle. One of them must be the length of one side at least. And you can solve it. Yeah. But yeah, I I do. It did seem like he was a bit of a a poe I, that that uh, balls out. Whatever. What what did he? Blatek. Has has anybody inter- oh, yeah. interacted with him before? Yes. Yeah. The uh, the moon is a light oh. pole, like a a, a torch. <laughs> no lighthouse. Get, a lighthouse. How do they get that? Sorry. Somebody was somebody was saying something. Yeah. Generally, you start with a conclusion and then try to find a justification. Uh, well, that is that is a common technique for flat earthers. True. Um, I actually I was just have... saying a comment comment that it started started with a um, it was a cold light, wasn't it? The moon. 
Uh, yeah, I've seen that yeah. that claim, of course. Yep. I just yeah, ridiculous. Um, so McToon, have you had much of the Azimuthal Grid of Vision? Have they given you that well, shit? I get that I've, all the time. I've not heard them bring it to me very often. You know, it comes from Witset, and Witset won't talk to me anymore. Yeah. But um, it, it's it's pretty simple. It's it's uh, well, you're claiming that light has to bend by a dramatic amount, and so what's causing it to bend? Never, never anything. But that's their explanation for the sudden celestial pole. Oh, it's the Azimuthal Grid of Vision. Yeah. And all these other magic words that don't make sense. Yeah, they're reifying it. Like, it's it's basically a coordinate system that they're reifying to somehow do something. Yep. So I put up I put up a little graphic there, the anti-scientific method that, that, that I've seen uh, all too many, uh, all too often used. They uh, select the required conclusion is, is the, the step one. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Um... Um, medicinal mass media. Um, may I come in uh, for a second? Yep. Um, yep. hi, this is uh, Epi Voltron. My name is Keith. Um, I was curious, you know, when it came to Sin Cleanser, would it be all right if I kind of went over the math form? I'm flat up myself. Just let him know. He, he messed up by saying why, and he meant theta. Do you mind if we go over that so he understands well, it? Well, this is actually MC's tune tonight. Uh, no, I, so you can go ahead and talk to him about it. Yeah, that, yeah. Go ahead, gotcha, Keith. Gotcha. Go ahead, gotcha. Keith. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, you mean now or yeah, right now? Going? Yeah, go and, and uh, do okay, you want to okay. do you want to pull up the uh, either sea foams diagram or sin cleansers diagram? Uh, sea foams was better to me. I agree. All right, I'll get sea foams. There and, is a really good animated version of uh, sin cleansers in chat now. Oh. An animated version. Well, let me let me look at that. See if there's something. Yeah, okay. it's even better than Sea Foams. Um, sea Foams sucks now because of that animated version. <laughs> sea Foams has too many labels. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there it is. I see. I see. All right, I see the one that uh, that you're talking about. Okay. Do you have that, Keith? Uh, it's probably going to be late on my. On my screen, I, I kind of remember it. Is, is Sin Cleanser unmuted to go over it, or no? Uh, no, you, you got you got to pull up. We have to look, be looking at the same diagram. Now I want uh, right now. I see one that's stretching. Yep, stretching back and forth. That's the one. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All right. What about just it? Just tell him or unmute him or what? Just tell him. No, you you just you just tried to explain his position. Oh, sin cleanser. See, the thing is that as as so first the it's going to shrink up. So let's say that's noon. Now the sun is going away. That's sunset. X gets longer. Y is going to stay the same. So depending on the time of the year. It, now we do agree. I think as flat Earth that it goes up and down whether it's summer or winter. We're not going to agree that the sun goes into the Earth or below. It, it does just that right there. It, it stays at the same height and it goes away. And that's why theta. Now, because, as always, we say flat Earth, the, the bottom goes up and the top goes down, that's what causes sunsets with flat Earth with this math that does work. I'm, I'm still missing how Y, or how, sorry, how Theta ever gets small enough for the sun to set. Flat Earth says the bottom goes up and the top goes down. That's going to why, cut into why, the sun. Why? So even if Theta is not at zero, so what do you mean the bottom? The bottom goes theta. up. Yes. How how does that happen? It's going to cut into any positive angle of theta. That's just a baseline. There is no questioning that. That's what happens on flat Earth. So if you're going to question that beyond flat Earth, then there's no real point in questioning it. So what I'm, we say I'm, on flat Earth and how that works. I'm I'm missing how how the baseline moves up in in linear elevation. Baseline is just going out. X. Yeah. We're talking about the the the, the bottom going. Wait, wait, yeah, you, you're you're, the you're saying right the bottom here that's actually going out. Yeah. Yeah, but you said okay. that the bottom goes up. How does the bottom go up? That's separate from X. X is just doing what X is doing. Got it. Got now, it. Now, 
how does the bottom flat earth perspective how does the bottom go up with flat earth perspective the bottom goes up and the top goes down okay now so, that's a separate thing that's for you if you want to accept how the sunsets I, work for you for sin cleanser i'm telling him for us that's how that works and that's why that sunset happens why does not go down x extends out all right so, so but i'm still not i'm all right for, fine you, you addressed sin cleanser but now i'm still i'm still at a loss as to what what would cause theta to go to zero in this diagram I never said it does. All right. Well, it would have to in order for the sun to set. The rules that you understand, yes. When you understand that the bottom goes up and the top goes down, no. Okay. Well, how does the bottom go up? I just know that's how we see. I don't have those answers yet. I can get that when I go further down into further science. Oh, it's just magic. Right now. So just magic. Okay. So it sounds to me. Here, I'll, I'll pull. Hold on. The way we see. Oh, hold How on. is it magic when that's the way you see? Here, hold on a second. You're looking I have... out there the way hold you're on, looking out there. I have a diagram. I'm going to put a diagram in the chat or uh, uh, for you to, to describe what you've done. There you go. That one I just posted. So you you started with the required conclusion, and then and then you only accept supporting evidence, and, but you haven't found any yet, but you still have blind faith that it exists, and you have already rejected all of the other contradicting evidence, you know, the evidence for the globe with measurements and predictions and everything like that so there you go all right got it now shoe bill has a fantastic diagram could you want to look at that one there keith quick it's up to you man yeah you want to pull it up so we can talk about it i don't have it what's that I don't have a. I don't, you asked me to pull it up. I don't have it. Are you gonna pull it up? I mean, you're in the. Are you not in the the chat? You can just click on the open chat there. I don't know. Are you on the phone? Maybe instead of. A I got. I got. I got a couple things going. I'm. I'm in. I'm in Discord. I'm on YouTube. So. All right, I'm well, seeing you through YouTube. Oh. Okay. Wait. You're talking through Discord, but watching him through YouTube. If you're in the Discord, yeah, just click on Discord. open chat. Yeah, just click on the open oh. chat and find the video or uh, image. Can someone uh, maybe repost it or tell us at what timestamp it was? <laughs> One minute on the hour. I'm going to uh, another time. I don't see all that yet, you guys. Uh, all right. Work with me a little bit. <laughs> All right. Um, Just on YouTube, I can see it though. I found it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm saying... sorry. Well, I mean, what what have you post on? Uh, yeah, yeah, your channel, your channel, yeah. Your channels are this. What's that? Channels on Discord. My channel is on Discord. On YouTube, when I'm looking at your channel, you're showing what you're showing through Discord. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can click on my link and see it too. Right, if you click you on my link, I've got the chat up in the in the right side. You can see it on my YouTube. Okay. I don't know about MC uh, Tunes YouTube. Oh, no, it's probably Is less. To go over or no? I, it, it, I don't know if you can. It, <laughs> it's, I, I can't. I can't do your tech for you. I can't do your tech. I can't figure this out, but he knows all the other. Oh no! What that? You just put the other thing up. So I, okay, fine. Uh, you know, what? next person. Let's go. All right, bye. You, <laughs> bye, Keith. Oh my gosh! It's posted at oh four after the hour right here. It's the most recent post. <laughs> uh I all right. So, the 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 diagram that uh, Shoe Bill is posting here, the and uh, now Sea Foam too, is the sun almost shrunk to a point approaching the vanishing point and not setting. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's partially obstructed by the horizon. It has not in this in this thing here. It has not shrunk to a point. But it's even worse than that, because when you actually do the the trigonometry, the sun could never be close to the horizon at all. It has to be significantly above the horizon in the middle of the night. This is again just solving triangles. So I'm I'm at 45 degrees north latitude. 
And on the equinox, which is coming up really soon here, right? On the equinox, the sun is over the equator. And I'm here, here I am at in Minneapolis at 45 degrees north latitude. We can we can do this pretty quick here. 45 degrees, that puts me at uh 45, 60 times 2,700 nautical miles from from the uh, the equator. And I the the angle to the sun at 45 degrees north latitude on that day is 45 degrees. So that means that when you solve that triangle for flat Earth, that the sun must be 2,700 nautical miles in elevation. Now, 12 hours later, when the sun has moved on flat Earth 180 degrees around to the opposite side of the North Pole from me, right? It's now 45 plus 90 um, degrees from me. That's 135 multiply that by 60 that means that the sun is the gp of the sun is now 8100 nautical miles away from me but it's still 2700 nautical miles high in the middle of the night the sun still has to be a significant elevation above flat earth but it's not it's yeah, never I think one of the worst things this new little group of flat earthers have done is admit that the sun sets. I think they were better off sticking with David Weiss as the sun shrinks as it gets further away. Yeah, and just even just though that one that one was bad, but at least yeah, just pretend that there aren't videos of the sun being obstructed bottom up. Yeah, yeah just pretend yeah. they don't exist, right? Pretend that the video that I posted earlier doesn't exist. I mean, it's on. It's only on my my channel. How do you losers claim that there's always obstruction at the bottom due to atmospheric conditions, but then you're claiming it's curvature of the Earth when it's not the curvature of the Earth? How do you do that? In well, I mean, I mean, I mean I, it's a flexible I, thing. It's always at a different distance. It has nothing to do with geometry or distances or anything. I'm a, I'm you a, know that I'm applying geometry perfectly here, Dan. Uh, I don't know if you quite can handle the geometry, but um, I'd be glad to go over it with you for your flat Earth, and you can you can show oh, me no. the geometry no, and you can point out where you think well I'm getting. I don't do well with you. I don't, you I don't you don't do well with geometry much. though, Dan. That's the problem, right? Well, can because, you do the geometry? You can't demonstrate your claims. You can't. Of course I can. Nobody can. Of course well, I can. Then fucking show me, man. Just show me. Show you show what? Show me how what? refraction what? how show me how refraction will affect a long range razor a laser observation where I'm pretty sure I've got over thirty five examples of clear line of sight that you think is impossible. So I'm just saying, show me the possibility of the bending of light during any of these conditions, and more importantly, during the changing of conditions. Certainly. For instance, right. morning, noon, morning, noon, and night. All right. Now you, you don't ready? have a demonstration. Are you ready? You so told what you, you asked me. A lot of words. You asked me. What you have is a you lot of me. words. You asked me. Now I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Thank you for muting him, Dan. You absolute douchebag. Could you just ask a question and then shut your face hole? Wow. All right, I posted a link there to my website, mctune.net slash refraction. Specifically, I want to call your attention to the, the first one there, labeled Monitoring the Refraction Coefficient in the Lower Atmosphere Using a Controlled Setup of Simultaneous Reciprocal Vertical Angle Measurements. That empirically measures the effects of refraction in the air and gives a listing of several other previous empirical measurements of the same effects then i will call your attention to the second one which is uh near the it's the bottom of my list there's a second list there so don't don't be confused by that one uh this is the list of ones that i have summarized the name of it is he's he's demonstrated yes i'm demonstrated right i'm giving you the background information that is necessary to understand the topic so there it is. It's called Results of Leveling Refraction Tests by the National Geodetic Survey. So there's a second one that is empirical measurements of the effects of refraction in the air, specifically uh, the vertical temperature gradient. That particular one, they had multiple thermometers on uh, stakes in the ground, on poles, and they measured the vertical temperature gradient along with the 
the angle measurement to see the effects of it. And in this, they're confirming that the, the predicted amount of angular change matches the measured amount of angular change. So these, these, these empirical measurements confirm that when the uh, index of refraction gradient is in certain states, that we can predict the effects of the um, of what we will see and how much something uh, dis a distant object will be increased in apparent elevation, including the uh, the effects of the radius of the arc of the light, which can can since the surface of the Earth is curved, and uh, the arc of light is curving. There are times when they can. Uh, they can be close to each other, especially at low elevation. So when you're doing a measurement over water at low elevation, the index of refraction gradient can cause the radius of the light to be significantly strong. Strong enough so that you can see uh, much farther than if there was no refraction. So there is there is the background information. Now you want to know... Um, you know, I, I, you're a little vague in what you're asking, so I'm going to call uh, once again to the to the measure, the uh, specific paper there. I put its name in: Re Results of Leveling Refraction Test by the National Geo Geodetic Survey. Go read that. All right, Dan the Waterman, you go read that. Educate yourself on that. All right, and I'll I'll uh, I'll put the link in one more time. All right, there you go. I made my point. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you for swearing at me. <laughs> I do like. I don't know if you saw it, Dan, but I did say that I gave you the shot to run a show like this, where you'd have the spot MC's got right now. Like everyone could be swear. Why am I muted? It's because Dan muted your ass. You know. <laughs> Um, anyway, I'm just not afraid. I'm just not afraid of a real conversation like you are. Oh, obviously you are afraid of real conversation. You wouldn't let me talk. You you only let me talk when somebody muted you. That was the only way that I could talk. So anyway, there you go. Got Read there. that. Read that, Dan. Get the background information so that you can have Fuck an intelligent off. conversation on this topic. Fuck off. Demonstrate it and stop talking. Demonstrate it. There you go. You hear me? Thanks for losing, Dan. Demonstrate it. Stop. Yep. Yep. You you can't have a, a real conversation, Dan. We all see that. We all see that. You can't have a real conversation. Um. Well, what would what would the criteria be for the real demonstration you're speaking of? Uh, would it be somebody going out in the field and measuring the effects of refraction? Oh well. Uh, um. Just just. Uh, I'm happy to give you exactly what you get right there. There it is. There's the demonstration. There's there's people that actually went out in the field and did the work and quantified the effects of an, of refraction. There you go. Are you able to explain the particulars that they put in that paper? Yeah. I think he's asking you for, to go over that. No, he's not. What does he, explain mean? Uh, what does he, demonstrate mean? No, he said, I don't know what demonstrate means to him. Whatever it is, remember, remember, this is this is this is his process here. Right here. He has pre-selected the required required conclusion. Now, when he demands that I demonstrate something, he's gonna go to step three, reject all contradicting evidence. Whatever it is that I show, whatever it is that I demonstrate. Whatever it is that I have, he's going to reject it and say that's not what he meant, right? And and if I ask nope. him, what specifically would you accept as a demonstration? He won't he won't answer that because he knows he will paint himself in a corner. Because I will present what he specifically asks for, and then he will be forced to reject it. Since you know the math. The other people who know the math will know that you know it and he, that he just doesn't know it. If you don't really know the math, some of us who know the math will know that, wait a minute, you don't really know what you're going over. Okay, whatever. Not sure what you mean by that, but that's fine. 
Um, I will. I will say. Let's see. I'll, I'll give a the the math. If you want to go over the math, let's see here. This one right here from uh, Andrew Thomas Young has some pretty nice work. Some pretty good math, and it and it gives links to some other papers. Um, is this the one? There's a different one there. I think this one. Let's see if this is the one here. Uh, oh, that's not it either. All right. Well, if you if you start with that, the one I put in there just now, uh, you'll you'll see it there. All right. Ruhif has something here. These graphs show density gradient measurements from hundreds of weather stations across the United States and Canada. This one is from Little Rock. What's that, Ruhif? If you like the next next slide, I'll go to the next one of them. Sure. You got. Ruhif, let me just say you are a smooth talker, man. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> the y-axis is the height above the surface. The x-axis is the refractive gradient. Uh, note that the x-axis needs to be multiplied by 1 times 10 to the negative 6, which is a positive number. The refractive gradient of negative 50 is actually 0 0.000050. Each dot represents a single measurement of the refractive gradient. There you go. There's uh, five slides in total, so I'll think about those. All right. What what is what is this? Is this from the uh, the paper? Or I don't different? know. No, that's are, from a different. These are my one. graphs that I've made from from weather balloon data. Ah, okay. All right. Whatever. One, two, three. Dots to the left of the red line represent a negative gradient, getting less dense as you gain altitude, and therefore light will bend downward. Dots to the right of the red line represent a positive gradient, getting denser as you gain altitude. Therefore, light will bend upward. Uh, and there's not a lot of dots over on the right side. Four, the green line represents the gradient that we call standard refraction. It's the value that's used in the Metabunk curve calculator. The black line. Uh, so, oh yeah, and that's a, a coefficient of refraction equals zero plus 0 0.167. Oh, it's about uh, that one point, point, 0 0.14. Let me work it out. Hold on. Hold on one second. The uh, standard refraction is typically uh, 7 over 6, which is uh, a coefficient, which uh, equates to a coefficient of refraction K of 0 0.167, I think. No, one point zero point one four is seven over six R equates to zero point one four in the Gaussian K. The Gaussian K. All right, that might be a different yeah, so the the ratio. Uh, there's yes, yeah, so there's... K, there's papers where K is the effective Earth radius, and there's also papers where K is the Gaussian Gaussian okay. ratio of the okay. temperatures. Yes, and and some of the papers in in my citation there. Specifically, the the uh, the one by Ismail Kabashi in German uses a different value, a different K uh, mm -hmm. than the one that I was that typically Andrew Thomas Young uses. So, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes K means radius multiplier. Sometimes it means ratio of curvature of light to the Earth. Yeah. Okay. So the, the black line represents the gradient as, at which the light curves at the same rate as the curvature of the Earth. Black line over on, black the, swan. Over on the left. That's yeah, okay. Black swan, yes. So you can see that to the left, to the left of the black line, there are some occasions yeah, where it, light will bend greater than the curvature of the Earth. So black swan, yes. Yes, it happens. All right, number five. Uh, according to the data, refraction is extremely variable close to the surface. Yeah, that's that's the low elevation ones are all over the place. Yes, exactly. Yes. And number two, once you're above the surface, a typical gradient is around negative 0 0.000022. This is what we call standard refraction. Once you're above the surface, the gradient is predictable. Yes. There it's almost go. like you're smart enough to understand this MC2. <laughs> like I know <laughs> <laughs> I've uh yeah. I've, I've read all these papers that 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 I linked on there. So. 
Yeah, the the only problem with that is that uh, there's there's just no way any Yankee could possibly understand all this. Any Yankee? Any any yeah. 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 No. I'm just saying that MC Tune is a Yankee, so how can he understand all this? I see. Um, and then you know Dan <laughs> Dan talks about his 35 measurements, but but yeah. but they're all near water, or almost all of them are near water, right? And and so we get across the bottom there, we get these conditions, and the the days that are nice to go out to to do these observations often are the days that are also high in refractive index, not necessarily, but you know if if you want to reduce the effects of refraction and not actually measure it then you want to do things like get away from the water get up at higher elevation choose a day that is overcast instead of sunny um so but i you know i don't know they don't they don't do a whole lot of uh they they dan has some i've seen his his stuff he has some attempts at at, at you know collecting these things but but basically he's just a, you know He's pretending like the, the the refraction doesn't happen is what he has to do. Yeah. Get away from the surface. Don't do shit like a foot above the surface like Black Swan. And, and as far as demonstration, uh, at 18 after, I, I put a, um, a graphic from the 1900 survey report in which they made coefficient of refraction observations over a 24-hour period. So going from day to night, and on the left is the coefficient of refraction. And you can see midday, the refraction is lowest. That is minimum yeah. at midday, when the air column is most 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 um, predictable or uh, the lowest um, the lowest gradient. Yeah. <laughs> but the point the, here is... The point is he's asking for demonstration, and here is a demonstration. Now, maybe he's worried about authorship. It can't be somebody else's demonstration. I don't know. But I thought this was particularly interesting. They took hourly readings for 24 hours across, in reciprocal zenith angles, and, and this Mount Diablo to, um, to, to um, Martinez. Martinez. Yeah. That's, like, that's like an 80 or 90-mile observation, and those mountain peaks are, you know, like a 10,000 feet. Yeah. But these are pretty low numbers, right? Like 0 0.11? Uh, no, well, no, those are um, those are the half numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, again, you pointed out there, too. That, that's, by m many um, definitions, that'd be 0.22. Okay, cool. Which is quite high. Because, yes, like a... yeah, because yeah, as you were pointing out before, a coefficient of refraction is quite often the, the typical... I, I hate the word standard. The typical is 0.14, yeah. but often it's that same value is quoted at 0.07. And if you look in the formulae, one of them has multiple, you know, over 2R, and one of them is like divide. <laughs> so, so I don't know if Gary's, uh, I don't know if Gary's able to unmute or anything, but uh, if he wants to have a shot at uh, the old grand pa tune here, Gary. Gary knows the uh, all Gary has is claims. He he doesn't have any like like Gary can't he'll say Rayleigh criterion, but he won't show how to apply it. Okay, that's the problem with Gary. I'll be around in a few minutes. I know how to apply it. Oh, you're gonna do the math? <laughs> I I want to see the math. You don't need math. You can show how it works. Ah, Just see, as I said, as I said, uh, that's what you, you, that's you all you have. You to, can't, sorry. you can't do you the math. Nothing. Harry, uh, why don't you ask Thune about the equatorial mounts and how they work? Oh That'd be gosh. a good topic. For you guys. <laughs> well, that's right. Glad that's right. The, uh, the equatorial. To do. That's right. Equatorial mount proves flat, doesn't it? <laughs> I love that. You know, um, this is like four years ago. Wolfie had a a challenge for for people to do a to show a physical model of a equatorial mount 
tracking something over some sort of a flat earth model and and i think the only submission he got was from flat out um who uh who uh, you you who you may remember from the flat earth community university uh that was a pretty pretty good uh uh submission it didn't it did not win though i i think one of the requirements is it only had a it had to have just a single motor drive yeah, it, it had only one axis that could vary, and I think flat out just couldn't make it work. Neither can Gary. No, he. I did. I did watch that video, Gary. That was very funny. I love it. Good, good comedy. Seafoam, could you could you DM me that that your link there? I I can't watch it right now. Gary shows y'all just how we see it, and y'all argue with him for no reason. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, oh, and here's a nice one. So, uh, uh, Nico de, de, uh, Le, de Hut. Can, can you, how do you say your name? I don't want to say it wrong. I, French is French is hard for me to pronounce. It's Nico. Nico. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Right. Okay, Nico, Nico is there's a demonstration right there, of of the effects of refraction just just for you, um, Dan. So in in the the one where it's partially obstructed, we see the lower refraction, and then the one where it's uh, less obstructed, you can see the effects of refraction, bendy cranes and all sorts of warping and stuff. And and some more of the bottom has been revealed. That's that is an actual demonstration of the effects of refraction. You have less refraction; it's obstructed. More refraction is less obstructed. There you go. And, and what Dan has been demonstrating is maybe some sort of an attempt at the study of refraction. So to study refraction, he needs more metrics. I'm not seeing any geometry, no math. I see these. He has excels with with bunches of numbers, but no no coalition coalition of those numbers into some sort of formulae that I might use. So it it's it's kind of odd that when I see these photographs that people cling to, they go, "Well, first you're going to have to measure the shape of the of the of the planet you're working on, so you can subtract that from your observation to get the effect of refraction." Ah, uh, it's a cart and horse thing, huh? Well, you said you you oh, there's you, there's more variables. Well, if you don't know the geometry of the hard terrain absent refraction, then how are you going to determine which is the geometry of the terrain and which is the the effect of refraction? So you have to measure the radius of the Earth first, which that's what I did. I measured the radius of the Earth first. It, not even as a flat earth debunk, uh, Kozowski and I and another guy, we, we, we just wanted to see what our instruments were capable of. So we measured the radius of the earth. Okay, 25 parts per million off of Vincenti geodesic. I think that was pretty good. And that was over 520 miles. Okay, so no, I get to use the radius. that I own that. Yeah. And when I yeah. did my work over the valley, in my own valley here, my coefficient of refraction... In, in the book, they quote that being typically 0.15, I got 1.154. Now, quite often it's quoted as 0.14, but I was looking in a 100-year-old British textbook, and they, they copy out and said, and it, you know, your, your environment, your locale, you know, may vary. So I got a very consistent four arc second per mile of refraction, and I can just Subtract that out just as easy as easy as pi. But I measured the radius first. And I was working at modest distances and line of sight typically a thousand feet above the valley. Pretty cool. Over multiple years. Um accumulating a lot of data. So, so I, I, I have I put that into I put that into Excel, not a survey package. And these 25 data points had an R squared of 0.99995. So it fit very, very well. I had like a couple of 
arc seconds of, of residual, which could come from atmospheric, instrument, observation, scintillation. Yeah, but it was in the few arc seconds. It's not some wild bullwhip of unknown. So when we see photographs like this, and you look at measuring the Earth, both, both of these photographs show you that photographs are not working. You might as well say one's right, one's wrong. I don't care. They're both out yeah. because they're too noisy. Um, I, I put a, a link to the uh, my spherical excess uh, calculations, um, but specifically the the first the first one here is a reciprocal zenith angle thing. So this is from so Dan again. You say you want. You want a demonstration? Well, here's a demonstration. What you asked for. Now, will you reject it because you don't like it? Because it contradicts your pre-selected conclusion? Probably. So, here is here is a uh, just a, a little demonstration. When we say reciprocal zenith angle, this is what we're talking about. Zenith is straight up. You see that plumb line there. Um, and this is, uh, you see the line of sight between those two sides, the left side and the right side there. So these are two theodolites facing each other. They could be done at the same time, or they could just be done independently um, by moving the theodolite and putting a target on, on either side, as uh, as the, like Baron, Baron Rutledge did at the Salt Flats. So here we have that we got the plumb line on the left, plumb line on the right. You measure that angle. If the angle is 90 degrees on the left and 90 degrees on the right, then that tells us that the Earth is flat. Now, this is neglecting refraction. And we'll, I'll add the refraction in, in a minute here. And in uh, on a globe, if, if the angle on the left and the angle on the right uh, are more than 90 each, it's if they're at the same elevation. Or what you do is you, you sum them together. So if it's more than 180, then that is that is indicative indicates that the earth is uh, a globe and now the effects of refraction if refraction will cause distant objects to appear slightly higher except in those very few circumstances like ruhif mentioned um so on flat earth the sum of the angles would be less than 180 degrees it would be you know 179 and a half degrees or something like that and on on the globe it would be so on the globe it it must be more than 180. so what's going to happen on the globe is it's going to reduce it refraction is going to reduce it so if you're still more than 180 and refraction is is at play then you're definitely looking at a globe so that's what's going on there that's what reciprocal zenith angles are i'll show you then so uh, you, you mentioned, Shubil, the 1900 survey. That would be the transcontinental triangulation in the American Arc of the Parallel. Gigantic, gigantic survey across the United States. These are the measurements of the reciprocal zenith angles that they did. So on the right side, uh, the, the bottom there, the x-axis, is the distance between the two points, between the two stations. You can see that first line is 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers. The farthest right one is just about 300 kilometers. So that's mountain peak to mountain peak, almost 300 kilometers apart. You will then see on the left side is uh, going up is the, the interior angles. This is how much it is more than 180 degrees. You'll notice none of them are less than zero, right? So every single measurement Everyone, zero exceptions, every one of them was more than 180 degrees. That indicates that the Earth is a globe. And as the distance increased between them, the angle increased in that nice pretty line there, confirming there that the Earth is a globe. Is there right. a reason why it's, the, it's curving up? It's not curving up. It's a straight line up. It's angled up. You mean angled up appreciate that. that that's all i wanted to know okay and so is there a problem understanding that on a flat earth when it comes to refraction they will cause that number to go over 180 degrees uh on flat earth that number will be less than 180 degrees 
Based off of what? On on flat Earth, I'll, I'll bring up the diagram again. It's the the reciprocal zenith angle diagram here. It's got a bunch of extra numbers in it. Um, oh, that one's not mine. That was from Shoebill. Thanks for that. All right, there's mine. Okay. Um, so if, if the Earth was flat, both both uh, and if both stations are at the same elevation, um, then both of them with zero refraction should measure 90, both sides. You sum, you get 180. But uh, with refraction, refraction causes distant objects to appear slightly higher, except in a few small circumstances, like Ru, like Ru have mentioned. Um, so the sum must be less than 180 degrees, Keith, for flat Earth. Now, in your graph there, that appears to be um, as observed, not, you know, no, no refraction removed. And I'm noticing the refraction, um, well, the, the angle excess in excess of 180 degrees is about 41 arc seconds per mile. Now, in my, again, in my work, I get 42. Yeah, so very close. And if you take out refraction, you get um, like 56. Okay. So refraction reduces that. So in higher refraction, they actually get closer to 180 degrees. When you, yeah. But not a lot. But not a lot. Yeah, that's so, why it can be ignored for in in so many short distances. Yeah, you know, it, it it becomes lower than instrument error. Yeah. So I I have uh, let's see. Um. So Walter Bislin did the analysis of all right. I'll put put a link in. So the you know for people were interested. So Walter Bislin did a, a bunch of analysis on that. I'm just looking for the the link. So what he did, so all that data that was uh, that was in that uh, survey was entered in to there it is. Okay. Was entered into a spreadsheet. I put the spreadsheet in there already. Um all the stuff you you'll find on this page here mc2.net/se spherical excess. Uh but also reciprocal zenith angles are in there, so don't don't think it's just that's the only thing. Anyway, so if you look at that Walter Bislin page, observations from the transcontinental triangulation of the American arc of the parallel. So I will grab that. I'm going to put it up on my uh, screen here for everybody to see. Um, so that's going on YouTube. I'll, I'll put the, the link once more for people. If you scroll down, you'll find to find that he actually has the data. I sent him the spreadsheet from, he says observations from the transcontinental triangulation. And he has the measurements there, the, the two stations, the to and from, from and to, the distance. And the important thing is there that he gets the K, the coefficient of refraction we were talking about earlier. And he, in, he, uh, he shows the the uh, if you look at dt over dh that's the change in temperature with respect to the height to the elevation um and so the different coefficients of refraction that he gets there for the globe are are plotted there so it's you know 0 0.098 0 0.05 0 0.1 um and then he actually does the calculations, what would be necessary, the coefficient of refraction for flat Earth to make it appear that way. And you'll notice they are negative values. Now, if you remember Ruhif's graph, the one where it was to the left, it would, it would be a uh, coefficient of refraction that was, go, or was it to the right? To the far right, to the far right of Ruhif's graph was showing uh, the, the rare cases where it actually caused things to bend upwards well it's rare but every one of these must have it happening like that for flat earth and not just a little a lot so if you look at the coefficient refraction necessary for the globe uh for the very first one adobe to kramer's gulch 0 
a perfectly reasonable coefficient refraction. For the for flat Earth, you need a coefficient refraction of negative 0 0.9, a very, very high or very, very low coefficient of refraction. Super rare to see a, a negative coefficient of refraction. And this isn't just low. This is 10 times the magnitude and low. So there you go. Uh, have a look at that page there. It, it shows quite a dramatic... Oh, yeah. In, or, <laughs> in order for the globe, the, the temperature gradient to work for the globe, you need to have 12.8 degrees per kilometer. In order for the temperature gradient to work for the for flat Earth, you need to have 231 degrees per kilometer. A dramatic uh, a dramatic uh, gradient there. Okay, I'm done with that. I'll... I do have another hey, one Mike? in 20 minutes, so I, I have to be out of here by then. Hey, Mike. Uh, this is your obnoxious and friend again how you doing I'm good well uh, yeah i'd like to I, I would like you to address something that that dan was yelling and screaming about earlier uh if you don't mind okay um and for some reason the chat will not let me put in a uh uh you know a, a picture uh can i send this to you real quick and maybe you can drop it into the chat sure all right give me one second here uh this is gonna be another foot picture no, 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 no. <laughs> he was, no. Look. No, he was he was he was jumping up and down about about refraction and, and perspective and talking about how you know they're never addressed, it's always one thing or it's always this or it's always that and it's of course All right, well send, send that to me. I'm gonna address the, the, the silly thing that, you that have, Dan just posted. Yeah. Um all of this talk now. All right, just a second, see if I'm all of this talk, all this time, the whole point is I've show, we've shown multiple measurements of, of the effects of refraction at low elevation being dramatic, and even more so at low elevations over water. And what does Dan show? Dan shows an observation at low elevation over water. Dan, that's the problem. Get away from the water. All right. Uh, Sky Hunter, apparently you can post now. Oh, okay, let me give it a shot then. I was about to send you an email, but okay, let me give it a shot real quick. And I'm still not clear if Dan is trying to prove flat Earth or study of refraction, because you've got to measure the Earth first, absent refraction. Yeah, and uh, a... a uh... <laughs> Yeah, you need to control for it somehow. So, all right, are you? Are you? Either, either. You, you got it, Sky Sky uh, Hunter. Yeah, this this is less. Yeah. Yeah, but do, did you post your, your your image yet? Give me ten cents. Ten, nine, I'm... eight. <laughs> so I was gonna. <laughs> so Dan, here's what you do, Dan. Do reciprocal zenith angle measurements at you know away from the water do it do it at high elevation do it mountaintop to mountaintop or hilltop to hilltop do that that's that's an example yeah oh look dan has another picture at low elevation <laughs> at night right over the land maximal refraction again that's all you have dan why why do you have to constantly just have examples that are at low elevation over land high refraction all right, Sky Hunter, you have the picture of the moon with the crane in front of it. I see that. Leslie? Where'd you go? Um, the the internet must have eaten him. Okay. He had to sacrifice himself to post that image. I do. I see that. And poor Dan, he got so angry. Look at that, Dan. Oh, you take your Valium, buddy. Something. You got to calm down. That's not nice. You got to do well, something yeah. to calm down. So while we're waiting for Sky Hunter to come back, one thing Dan mentioned previously was that he, there were a couple of times he did his, his laser over water experiment, but the laser wouldn't drop far enough 
to the observer. And, and to quote Dan, it kept getting stuck in the clouds. Okay. So our, our assumption is this, this happened on a day where there was little refraction. It could be. It, I mean, yeah, how far away was it and stuff? And, and so, yeah, as you're farther away, your angle to the, to the person changes. And, you know, so to, to the observer on the other side from the laser, the laser is tipped up. So, all right. Um, Dan, your, your data is garbage. That's why. I mean, all this work. I didn't claim you did it over water. I claim you did it in maximum refractive conditions, Dan, like this one right here. There you go. At, uh, yep, Flatlanders. The Flatlanders right over the, the railroad track. I watched it. It was at night after a sunny day. Clear skies all day. Nice and hot sun. And you're at, and you're five feet above the ground the whole way. Maximum refraction. That's what you're doing. So it, it, it's, it's cherry picking the time and the conditions that are favorable for you to get that, pre, that, re, that outcome that you demand. So, all right, Le Leslie is gone. I have some, I have some uh, super chats and some other stuff to, to read. So I'm still here actually. Uh, oh, it is doing, it is doing some strange things to me. It's kicking me out and back in. I don't know why. If you were hot micing, somebody moved you to the hot mic room. I oh, see. Sorry. All right. So you want to talk about that that moon behind the crane thing quick, and then I'm gonna. Okay. Uh, sure. I mean. Okay. Sure. I mean, you can see there in that in that photo. I'll post it again here real quick. No, I have it on the uh, screen already. Oh, good. Yeah, you can see in that photo that the the moon looks squished, squashed, whatever. Yeah. Um. It. it yeah. It's uh it's not quite round and and we all know that normally it looks very round you can also see that the edges are very wobbly waffly whatever you want to call it yeah. that moon is experiencing a lot of refraction because you know i don't know maybe it's it, whatever it is there's going to be a fairly you know decent amount of uh gradient temperature gradient up above the, the ground where they're showing it uh and so it looks squashed and not really real smooth at the same time, it's about to set, and yet it hasn't gotten any smaller, not a width smaller. Yeah, the, the width, when, when the, line is back. the angular width is the same. The, a, the vertical height is compressed. And, and like, you, like you mentioned, yeah, that you, we can see some, some wavy edges on it. Uh, so a good crisp edge on that. The moon shows us a good, uh, it's a good opportunity to see that there is some inconsistent refraction there. But um, in, the, so... The way that the primary cause of the the primary source of refraction in the lower atmosphere from one to ten kilometers up somewhere in that range is the temperature gradient and then the rest of the atmosphere is primarily the pressure just the pressure gradient and since the moon is outside of the atmosphere it's very far away the the light has to travel through the entirety of the atmosphere so it goes first through the rather consistent pressure uh, uh, stack of the, the top atmosphere and then through the somewhat inconsistent temperature gradient, refraction gradient in the lower 1 to 10 kilometers. So there we go. Precisely. And uh, by the way, that's the simple answer to the age-old question that all third graders ask. Daddy, why is the sky blue? Rayleigh criteria or Rayleigh scattering. Okay. Well, um, Demon Stride, you still there? Oh yeah. Always. So you, you said, you said you, I, I had mislabeled you that you're a Glober. What, what are you? <laughs> oh, you I said, said you're definitely not, not a Glober. Oh, oh, I said, <laughs> um, I meant I was, I had initially written it that he's not a flat earther. Um, and then I changed okay, it. I so, it. Okay. I fixed it. I fixed it. I thought you were just joking from before uh, the last stream we did together. You said uh, you didn't know if I was a flat earther or not. <clears throat> I thought it was funny. You could have kept it. Well, somebody told me that. 
I won't say who. I'm sure they did. I won't but, say who. <laughs> it's probably but Shane. It wasn't Shane. <laughs> it wasn't even a flatty. Oh, it was man. a non-flatty. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, you. I have my there's, suspicions. There's. Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um. And oh, I yeah, I I don't. Yeah. The the. Uh, let's see, I'll just say Rob, Rob Knox just had posted that that thing there, um, and then Seafoam said, "Yeah, we don't we don't need to dis disparage the dead." So. Um, well, well MC, I enjoyed uh, moderating for you. Sorry that I had to drop off, but uh, I enjoyed you being here and listening to you tonight. And uh, I just want to tell you, I hope you have a good night. All right. I hope to see you here again. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We'll we'll uh, catch you later. And I'm gonna go back awesome. to uh, go back to my it. channel. All right. So. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for coming. All right. Let me, uh, that one. I'm going to do one, a different one. Hold on. There it is. Okay. So we can see the live chat there, right there. Thank you. All right. That was, uh, man, it was like just the angry ones. <laughs> Sin cleanser, poet. Uh, seriously. I get pe people tell me, they're like, I think this guy's a Poe. I think this guy's a Poe. I am convinced every time more and more that Sin Cleanser is a Poe. Um, he, he refused to look at it, right? He, he's, he's intentionally messing around to, to, to not touch it, not to touch the evidence. Uh, Dan the Waterman, he j <laughs> okay, same thing. He's not a Poe, but same thing as always from Dan. Angry, won't let me talk, belligerent. Um, <laughs> always talking about his 35 observations in maximum refractive conditions and no observations in minimal refractive conditions. So anyway, let me uh, let me get a couple uh, super, read, read these super chats we got going here. Um, wow, th uh, thank you, people. Um, it's been... So, yeah, I do have another one coming up in eight minutes. It might be a little bit late with uh, with uh, Bryant Myers. So Steps 85 is a new member at Einstein. We've got MK Ultra who says, I'm into it. Tell him many Karen wants a spank. Uh, the MK, MK is many Karen. Um, all right. Sin cleanser. MK is ready for you. Uh, Grumpy Old Mechanic says, Ask Sin Cleanser why the Journal of Astronomy and Astrophysics and the Journal of Geophysical Re Research exists. Let me see. What would he say? Because he can't, he won't answer a question ever. But uh, but if he would answer a question, he'd probably say something like it's because he's not honest. He's not actually a flat earther. He, he would say, um, It's all made up, it's done to hide to hide uh, the, the real truth. So. Uh, Fa of the QTube family says, wait, did a flat, a flurf just say, we have to visualize reality? Yes. Yes. Crashes, crashes, says bacon triangles must be Canadian bacon. <laughs> um, you know what? One of the, one of the, foundational guys in the philosophy of science is Francis Bacon. And it, it occurred to me two things. There is not yet a name. Well, so there are lots of uh, non-fundamental SI units that have names, right? So the, 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 the name for the primary name for the magnet, a magnetic uh, charge or magnetic uh, field strength is Tesla, but you've got Gauss too is a thousandth of a Tesla. Um, you've got pressure is measured in Pascals. You've got um, uh, resistance is measured in ohms. That's somebody's name, Georg Ohm. Uh, you've got uh, capacitance is measured in farads. That's another person's name. All these things are named after people. But there's none named after Francis. So it occurred to me, well, what would be... Uh, what's a unit that doesn't yet have uh, a name assigned to it? Well, that would be um, uh, kilogram meters per second, which is what? In the chat, what is kilogram meters per second? 
the, what's the name for that? Not, not the unit. There is no unit. There's no compound unit for kilogram meters per second. So what I'm proposing, what I'm proposing is that we name the unit for momentum after Francis Bacon, and we just call it Bacon's. How about that? We'll see if that catches on. Yes, hyperspace hedgehog Clive Wells, why oi? Uh, uh, no, they they both got momentum. Why oi said acceleration wrong. <laughs> Lord is probing time said acceleration. Gigi said baconators. So there you go. It could be baconators. Anyway, so let's let's see if we can make this happen. The SI unit for uh, for momentum is bacon. Let's give it a shot. PSG Tony, in response to Sin Cleanser being honest or having a, a good faith conversation or something, don't hold your breath, tune, explanations, data, and rationality are not strong points of Sin Cleanser or any flatter. Definitely found that to be the case. Pronon 1990 is a member at 19 months and had a message, but I don't see it. Stringer News 1 says, is the flat, if the flat earth is real, why can't I see it myself? Mr. E-Man for 50 Australian. Thank you very much, Mr. E-Man. Says, this time I am not late. I might be able to catch any evidence that is presented without having to re-watch the stream. So can the flurf start with measurements of flatness? Oh, I forgot that flurfs consider word salad to be evidence. This is wrong. Yes. <laughs> how long did Sin Cleanser puff up his chest after I asked, how does the sun set? And he, he didn't even... He's like, I'm going to, he's, are you ready for it? I'm going to spank you. I'm, are you ready for it? You're not ready for it forever. And then he never did. Um, PhD Tony says, Sin Cleanser would be as rich as Croasis if he took up tutoring and charged by the hour. It's been 30 minutes and he has conveyed zero information. That is, yeah, and that's another, you know, trait of somebody that's not a good faith debater. Right. Imagine being in a structured debate where you had a time and you were going to be evaluated based on how well you presented your case. Right. You'd never do that. You wouldn't waffle for 10 minutes and then the timer's done. And you're like, oh, well, I rest my case. It wouldn't work. Randomly Epic says they know the shape of the earth better than experts who have measured and studied it for decades, yet they can't properly draw, measure, and label a drawing of a triangle. Wow. Yes. Uh, Clarence. Clarence eight, AS2 says you've really earned this tonight. Open some more tabs on me. Thank you for that. Clarence. Uh, Mr. E-Man. In 1970, Flat Earth died with Alfred Russell Wallace. We have been hammering nails in the coffin housing Flat Earth ever since. Was was he... I don't know. I mean, Robottom died and Carpenter and... You know, the, the list goes on of Flatties, but yeah. There have been... Uh, what about Shelton? Sheldon? Shelton? I don't know. There, there's, there is. It's strange enough. There is an unbroken line from Robottom to the flat earthers today. There has never been since Robottom's day a lack of of somebody claiming that. So, I don't know. Both Mister E Man and Randomly Epic, Epic gifted five memberships. Thank you very much for that, both of you. Um, string news one, where does the sun crash into flat earth? Yes. So if sin cleanser claimed that the elevation shrunk, it'd have to crash into it. <laughs> Donald, <laughs> Donald Trump's 116 indictments as a member super chat. That is five cans of tab. There, I just, just got this one. I'm an ass Arkham it says access here late, but alive to watch. You have no idea. Uh, well, I, I said earlier, you can rewind it. I said hello to you and Penny earlier. And Eddie Reese says, Flurfs have to monologue to avoid answering. Well, yeah, that's, that's certainly one way. Um, did you see, I, I just yesterday listened to 
uh, the debate between Oakley and Jaron on on the uh, asylum. And I have to say, Jaron was really good. That was the best I've ever seen Jaron do. And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being hyperbolic. That was fantastic. He tore into Oakley. He had, it was good. It was good. Um, so if you haven't seen that, if you're interested in watching that, it's good. And then when Oakley, and then Oakley leaves at some point to go con console himself by hugging his mute button and, um, uh, then Jaron talks about other stuff for a while. So if you get to at least when Oakley leaves, that that's the best part. Uh, after that is is optional. So optional. It's not like it's an assignment. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Tim Davidson says a snake walks into a bar. Bartender says, "How do you do that?" There you go. Um, Jeebus says, "Nope, not seen that. Maybe do a stream about it." I I could, I could. Um, it was most of two hours, so a stream talking about it. I'd either have to clip it up and have clips ahead of time or take four hours. <laughs> so anyway, um, I have another we have another one coming up with Bryant Myers in just a minute. I'm going to go uh, recycle some tab, and then I'm going to start up with, uh, with Bryant. Everybody, thank you very much for participating. Thank you to Demon Stride for uh, hosting over on, on his server. Um, maybe that's a, a good start to another, uh, uh to, to more of a series of, of, uh, ones happening there where maybe some more flat earthers who are actual flat earthers, uh, who actually have evidence would, would show up. But, uh, uh, the moderation, that was pretty good. They actually got on me, which, which I have to say, um, I'm, I'm stalling a little bit here, just on, on for on purpose. Um, uh, um, I like I I like to up, sometimes I'll intentionally push it just to make sure that I get a little bit of pushback uh, from a moderator because uh, hey, it should be it should be both sides. So, all right, it's it's almost done. It's almost ready. But Brian Leake said they wouldn't let me join. Well, Brian Leake, uh, you can you can uh, message me. You can just you can just come on here. You don't have to be on a Discord server. But anyway, people, thank you very much. We'll see you in a couple minutes.